Hey there, Tad. Hello, Joseph. Would you like to know something I'd like to talk about? And what's that? Family friendly, certainly able to be discussed anytime, anywhere subject. No, no, no. If you're in a public place or at your workstation, you better turn this off right now. Because let me tell you about serial killers. Uh, oh, I'm having one. Uh, drinking the blood. I don't know if it even uh, picked up that, but serial killers. Both me and Joe have an unnatural interest in serial killers. Oh, uh, I love them. And by unnatural, I mean like any interest at all, because they're te- like, by definition, they're pretty fucking disgusting human beings, and you should not be interested in them at all. But it's the <laughs> for me, it's the it's the psyche. What has to happen to someone to make them go out and kill thirty two boys and put them in their basement? Whatever. I just like watching death footage. I'll do whatever. Yeah, Joe's homepage. I'm just is a e-fucked. sick fuck. Yeah. Yeah, e fucked is his uh, is his Google. Oh, Whenever he needs to find something, uh, like oh, he's gonna search for laundry places near him. I'll just type it right into e fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and then a bunch of just like naked men washing their clothes pop up, and I can't believe it. All right, <laughs> all right, Joe. Do you want to start us off? Who okay, is cool. your favorite um, serial killer? My favorite absolutely has to be. Good old Jeffrey Lionel Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer. Okay. Now, for people who aren't fucking weirdos, who is Jeffrey Dahmer? What did he do? Uh, Why is he so fucked up? So, Dahmer, what he did was he killed about 20 people. He really, really liked to have sex with non-moving bodies. And normally that's not a big deal. You buy yourself like a real doll. Um, You just kind of pretend your chick's asleep. Or whatever. Um, but instead, he strangled a bunch of young men, and he took a drill, and he drilled into their brains, and he tried to pour battery acid into their brains to make them living sex slaves, like zombie sex slaves, and then he would uh, cut them into pieces and cook the meat and eat the meat and feed the meat to other people. Feed the meat to other people? That's news oh, yeah. to me. Yeah, I mean, a free meal. Nobody can complain about a free meal. Okay, so um so Jeffrey Dahmer, uh I know a little bit about him. Uh he was uh, kind of unique in a serial killer in a way. No, I I think he was definitely unique because there was a underlying sadness to him because he knew what he was doing was absolutely wrong but he couldn't stop himself. Yeah, like the the stereotypical serial killer is like a a dude who will show up, kill a bunch of people, and then, like, you know, r- draw a pentagram on the walls and, like, eat blood and, like, be, like, super crazy and then go live in his hovel and come out every night or whatever. Well, it, I mean, it's not necessarily being crazy. It's being a sociopath. Like, having no remorse or whatever you, wrongs you inflict on a person, and that's what enables them to be able to kill without remorse. Jeffrey Dahmer just had to own bodies. So he must kill people. It's definitely, definitely psychology plays a huge role in uh, in a serial killer. Yep. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, there's the uh, McDonald triad. It's like a, it's not really a proven thing, but it's a thing that a lot of young, soon-to-be serial killers exhibit. Um, they piss their pants whenever they're kids and wet the bed. Um, they torture animals, and they like to light fires. Well... One of those three is just a natural thing. Like, it's always like, oh, cool, fire. No, 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 but chronic bed weathers. Oh, fires? Okay, yeah. yeah. I mean... Yeah, I like fires, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll burn down a house, you yeah. know? I'm in the mood Watch for it. it. Yeah. Um, whenever I was in the Boy Scouts, basically, I would um, take a big, large poking stick and just put it in the fire for several minutes, and then I would take it out, um, the non-heated part of it, and then I would just get to run around and wave it like I was some kind of tribesman from the olden days, and I had such fun. Such fun. <laughs> did you get kicked out of the Boy Scouts? I feel like you did. No, I got kicked out of Sunday school. Sunday school? Yeah. What'd you do to get kicked out of Sunday school? I was th- throwing Cheerios at my brother. because he, <laughs> he kept looking at me with his goddamn eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. No, so I was not allowed back there. Oh, boy. He said, be gone, devil child. You take your goddamn heathen antics and get out of our holy place. God, we've got, we've got some other children to molest. 
So, my favorite serial killer, the one that deeply disturbed me, is Albert Fish. Ooh, I Albert love Mr. Fish. Fish. Like, I... Oh, uh, while away the hours, like, uh, you know, I'm kind of bored. I'm going to listen to a podcast that'll kind of like go into in depth on uh, some serial killers, uh, you know, stuff like that. There's there's a bunch of them out there. And uh, the only one uh, that I can remember right now, it happened, you know, it's happened multiple times because I'm not a fucking unthinking, unfeeling animal. I'm like how Joe over there seems to think, I'll kill you, Joe, if you look at me like that again. <clears throat> yeah, it's like we're watching a big roach. It's like watching a big roach. But anyway, Albert Fish was abs he is an absolute disgusting human being. He was this uh well actually Joe, I think you know even more about Albert Fish than I do. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean Albert Fish basically exhibited almost every single type of like sexual perversion a human being can have. <laughs> um, um, I mean one of them uh he he was also very closely associated with children. Yeah, I mean, that's the only thing I really fault him for doing. If he just... Um, <laughs> no, he, you can't fuck with children, but anything else I think is basically fine. Joe, he, like, killed... That's him. what I'm saying. You cannot fuck with children, but... <sighs> he, he, did a lot of, he did a lot of bad things. Um, he killed children, and he drank his own piss, and he liked to put needles in him. He would play a game with these kids, and this is what made me, like, stop. Like, I had to pause the podcast and listen to it later. It was called Buck, Buck, How Many Hands Up? Mm. That's a fun little game. What you do is you get some children, you set them down, and you say, okay, now you try to guess how many fingers I have up, and then if you guess wrong, you're going to have to spank me for how many times I got wrong. So, like, yeah, he'd basically, he'd guess wrong every single time, and they would just spank him with a paintbrush. Or stick needles in him. No, 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 he sticked the needles in himself. That was a different play date. Oh, no, oh, jeez. Yeah. Um, but there was another thing that he did that I had to stop listening to. It was, like, three times in this just this one hour and a half span. Uh, he had a letter that he sent to, like, the parents of... Um, Grace Spud. They were named after potatoes because they were poor. <laughs> and Irish. Yeah, yeah. He sent her a letter detailing how, like, he ate her child and, oh, it was fucking disgusting. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. he is the most interesting serial killer to me because he is so extreme. Oh, yeah, he would do absolutely anything. Like, he loved to... He would basically take sewing needles and jab them up into his taint until they were lost. Because he loved the sensation of causing pain to himself that he couldn't stop. Um, wasn't there also a thing where he tried to get an MRI in the in the prison and he couldn't because it like would in, it would like no I, that's a rumor. Some people say that he sparked up whenever they electrocuted him to death. Um, but there is an X-ray of his body after he died, and there's like 27 pins jammed up in him. Oh my god! Wouldn't you constantly be feeling that? Which is probably the reason why he did it. Yeah. Yeah. You like pins, whatever. Ooh. He's like a little, like, old man sewing cushion. Oh, God. Yeah. But, um, so the reason that we, we, we were going to do a different episode with this, but we decided that we just didn't have enough prepared. Yeah, so, well, uh, I didn't have enough prepared. I'm, like, basically a big lazy cat. Yeah. I'm like I... Garfield, but not, like, orange. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, where is my pipe? Joe! Uh, oh, you saw that too? Yeah. Was on your cat. Oh, Where it's so is good. my pipe? Yeah. Oh, the ending of that. It's amazing. Now, the reason we decided to go with Zero Killers is that uh, a while ago, Joe pitched an idea to me for a TV show. And the TV show is about, uh, was originally at least, and this was back in like 2013 or 2012. This is a while ago. Uh, the pitch was these three people move into an, a, a bedroom, like a one bedroom apartment in New York City. And those three people are Jeffrey Dahmer, Ed Gein, and John Wayne Gacy. And they have to live in this uh, in this apartment in New York City and try to make it make make it in uh, make it in the big old city of New York. And the title of the show was This House is Most Certainly Filled with Bones. Yeah. Now, the three in question, there's Jeffrey Dahmer, which Joe talked about. Ed Gein was that guy who, uh, uh, you know, made 
furniture out of dead bodies. Uh, he was a lonely farm boy who loved his mommy. His mommy died. He couldn't handle it. He dug her up. Um, I don't know if he necessarily made um, chairs and stuff out of her bones, but then he would go to graves, dig up body parts, take them, and make furniture out of them. And he made, like, a woman's suit? Yes, he made a lot of women's suits. He made us... Uh, wasn't he the inspiration for Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Yes, he was. Okay. Uh, Texas Chainsaw, Silence of the Lambs are two big ones. Uh, and then John Wayne uh, Gacy. Psycho as well. Uh, Psycho. John Wayne Gacy was a dude from the Chicago area. He was this big, fat piece of shit. Uh, he would dress as Pogo the Clown. Yes. And uh, he murdered 32 little boys. Yep. Uh, 27 was... in the crawl space, 5 in the river. Ugh. And he would... Um, and he, uh, there's there's a whole psychology there. You know, you can go in depth about each and every one of these. But uh, the important things to note for this funny wacky sitcom is that Ed Gein, you could boil him down to a, uh, you know, he's an artist. You know, he's a misunderstood artist. Uh, John Wayne Gacy is a obviously gay, but definitely not 100 percent denial fat ob- obese man who smells of like cheese. Mm, and then Jeffrey cheese. Dahmer is he's like that guy from the office you know Jeffrey Dahmer is just like guys come on you know he looks at the camera does that exasperated look you know yeah. Jeffrey Dahmer is the straight man despite being like very very uh was he flamboyant I don't remember no uh John Lane Gacy didn't like gays because his father was homophobic and he that's right. His father yeah. was incredibly. He called them berry pickers or something. Yeah, yeah. And so John Wayne Gacy was, uh, like, you know, he was super repressed because of that. All of them were. All of them were incredibly repressed homosexuals because this was, these these crimes took place from like the forties to the seventies or forties. Yeah, to the mostly. 80s. Um, Gein was in the twenties, I believe, and then the other two got caught in the eighties. Yeah, it's 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 the whole fucking disgusting thing. Yeah, but yeah, because uh, Ed Gein, like basically, people could not believe what he was done, like what he had done. It it, it just never occurred uh, occurred to people that something like that could even happen. Like they thought he was. Whenever they found the farm, they thought he was killing a bunch of people. He only killed two women. He dug up everything else. He killed his brother. Almost well, certainly, technically, he... his brother went missing. Yeah, quote unquote. And then Ed Gein, like, led the police directly to where he was. Go, oh, yeah, yeah, my brother went missing in the woods. Oh, I'm going to lead you exactly where he was. I'm Ed fucking Gein. I yeah. killed my brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, whatever. But anyway. Uh, Fine, OJ was innocent. But, yeah, the uh, Joe pitched this idea to me for a sitcom called This House is Most Certainly Filled with Bones. And, uh, you know, that was the original pitch. I absolutely am in love with the idea, and I would love to play the character of John Wayne Gacy. In this sitcom version of these horrible people. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, the, the thing of it is I'm basically learning how to edit right now. And um, I, I still got to script the full season because I do want to not necessarily make it into a full thing, but have the option of making it into a full thing if I so choose. Yeah, because it, 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 it's essentially like an anti-sitcom as you described it. Yes, um, because it's... So a sitcom is uh, predictable and formulaic, and it's never funny, but it's always trying to be. This would be something that's always changing. Um, the characters themselves are despicable, and it's, it should be very funny, but none of the characters are trying to be because they're trying to fuck boys or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And, like, you know, each character is an archetype, uh, lampooning, you know, sitcom stuff. John Wayne Gacy is extremely flamboyant. Uh, Ed Gein is just a misunderstood artist. And Dahmer, despite him being, like, d- d- un- incredibly messed up, you know, all three of them are super fucked in the head. Like, they are gone yeah. from society. They are ruined. Dahmer is supposed to be the street man. Like, guys, come on. Let's be sensible about this. Yeah, I, I, out of the three of them, Gacy was definitely the worst. Um, He was just, like, he thought he was literally above humanity, and he also targeted children. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, Dahmer probably fucked a couple, um, like, 16-year-olds or whatever, but, I mean, uh, Gacy was going after, like, 14, 15, like, because he was, um, he was he was in, like, a home uh, repairing, like, company. He had his own company, so he could hire young boys 
without it seeming too odd back in the 80s. Yeah, he had so that's a, what he did. a contracting company, which he was able to just go into people's houses, like, and look around at all the stuff that he wanted, mm-hmm. and he got hire, you know, kind of drifting people to do work for him, and then, uh, there you go, there's a little uh, perfect storm there, perfect hunting grounds. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I mean, and there's so many different serial killers, I mean, you you don't even hear about them all, there's a ton of them. It's, it's a, it's a, and they're most, well, I wouldn't, I don't, I don't know if I should say mostly. But there's a lot of American serial killers. It's like a weird yeah, American thing. Yeah, there's a lot thing. of Americans. That's true. I don't know if it's just... Because, I mean, you don't see it... I mean, maybe it's just not reported. But, you know, it happens in, like, China. and so There was um, another one that made me stop was Andre Chikatilo. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Um, uh, we're By the way, we're talking about uh, the last podcast on the left, just in case we haven't made that clear. Like, we yeah, both like yeah, to yeah, listen that's... to it a lot. Yeah, that's the podcast. They're great. Hong Kong Henry Zabrowski is oh. uh, literally me. I have the exact same body type. We both share a uh, a physique of Dr. Eggman. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, whatever. There's nothing wrong with being round. Rotund. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brother my, my brother called me plump. <laughs> Pleasantly plump, like Dr. Eggman. Yeah, 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 yeah. I basically just look like a burnt marshmallow. <laughs> The burning is on the inside, though. Yeah, yeah, it's because of all the dead people I've seen on the internet. I was going to say because of all, like, the, the chicken nuggets you eat that you're just kind of, like, scarred up on the inside. But, I mean, yeah. if you want to take it that way, yeah. yeah we did yeah. literally eat between us uh, about 30 minutes ago uh, 30 chicken nuggets. No, we ate 60 between us. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it was 30 a pop. Yep. Oh, yeah. oh my God. But uh, Mr. Tad, he got one of my nuggets, so I only got 29. <laughs> <laughs> you got 29 nugs, and I got 31. I'm sorry, mm, Joe. Mm. Uh, next time that we hang out, I will give you a chicken nug. Okay. I okay. mean, I I just want what's fair. I mean, I, listen, I'm a, I might not sound it, but I'm a young Republican. I, I just want what's due to me. Yeah, you're a regular... Uh, oh, no, John Wayne Gacy was a Democrat. Uh, yeah, I believe he was. Um, so who was a Republican? Alex Jones wouldn't do this. Yeah, no, exactly. Alex Jones probably just has, like, a bunch of, like, he takes, like, iguanas and staples them to his wall because he thinks he's going to get the lizards, like, babies. Yeah, let's talk about the reptilians a little bit. This would just be kind of like a general, uh, definitely 0% crazy, 100% sane. What do you know about the reptilians, Joe? I I know a good amount. The goddamn reptilians. They keep coming down here. They're going to eat us like cattle, so they took over the government. And now this goddamn Obama, now that he's finally out, the goddamn Trump, he's probably just a lizard puppet. Just a lizard puppet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that like a Brit? Is that like yeah, a British? Yeah, yeah. it's word? like a little thing of bread. Okay, so they're just gonna munch him up just like they did fucking Obama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're going to eat our children. They're gonna eat our goddamn children. Yeah, no, he's- no, it- he's taking my goddamn salt. And I paid for that with my hard-earned tax dollars. And oh, my shoes. The lizards are taking my shoes. All right, Alex Jones. No! No, it's my radio show. It's my radio show, god damn it. I'm a human. I'm alive. I got hot blood. Uh, reptilians, from what I understand, are uh, only, only believed in by crazy people. Uh, that's a fucking yeah. given. When they eat off of, like human suffering yeah kind of uh, well I, I i've heard that they like physically eat humans like they're kind of like uh breeding us for cattle no 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 joe you're thinking of the jewish people oh, i've the read Palladians. so many the pleiadians all that shit uh the grays when i was bored at my old job uh i used to find like I would I would type into uh, my podcast searching. I'd look for episodes. I'd type in the word Jew or Jewish, and I would find like radio stations that people put up of like dudes with terrible, terrible microphones, kind of like these. Uh, assuming this recording doesn't come out very high quality, because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with actual equipment yeah. that I'm borrowing from Tyler Am. Well, he probably doesn't want his name in this. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> it's in there now. Yeah. Uh, he's in there alongside Alex Jones and the Reptilians. Yeah. But I would listen to these. I would listen to these podcasts, these radio shows that people put out, and it would just be like incredibly anti-Semitic. Oh uh, yeah, no. homophobic, just 
people shouting into their microphones over Skype at each other about the 12 different types of aliens. And uh, it's pretty entertaining to listen to these people just flip shit for hours and hours. I mean, they basically never stop. They're like a wind-up monkey that instead of clapping the little, like, uh, uh, clappers together, they basically just scream racial slurs yeah, about, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, the other people. About people with different colored skin or ethnicity. Yeah, yeah. Oh, or sometimes if you have tattoos, they don't like that. Ugh. It says in the Bible that you can't have no the devil's lattice all over your body. People are just rubbing pot all over themselves. All right, Joe, so... uh all right, I've got an important question for you, and this is oh. one that I couldn't find the answer to myself for, okay. you know, pertaining to myself. If you were a serial killer, what would you be? Um, I, I'd do something like Zodiac did. I would just go up to random people, shoot them, and then walk away. I'm pretty sure it's the exact opposite of what the Zodiac killer did. No, I mean, sure... most of the time he would just go up to cars, he'd shoot them, and then he'd drive away or walk away. Wasn't the Zodiac Killer, like, he would do, like, intense cat and mouse games with the police. He would send it on... Well, he was messing with the police, yeah, but the people he killed just completely random. He would just get away pretty quickly. I mean, yeah. Didn't he look like Shad Man? Nobody really knows, like, what he looks like because all the witnesses are unreliable. I'm pretty sure, like, does it... I'm pretty sure it looks like Shad Man. You know Shad Man, right? No. Uh, he's an internet porn artist that's basically the embodiment of that kid... Like, that super edgy kid that no one really likes. Ah. Uh, he draws, like, he drew, uh, I think he got in trouble uh, recently. He almost lost his visa, I believe, because uh, someone, uh, there's this dude called Killer Keemstar. He does YouTube videos. And, like, fucking Shad Man, like, drew some very risque pictures of his eight-year-old daughter. And so, like, the dude, like, tried fucking suing his ass. Yeah. But basically, Shad Man is the Zodiac Killer. Uh, Ooh, maybe. Because Ted Cruz didn't win the election, so he's obviously not the Zodiac Killer. No, nope, he would have been able to get it. He would have just, like, took some, like, bloody cloth and mailed it to the other president. He what got in. Uh, but, uh, what would I be if I was a serial killer, Joe? What, what do you think? Because um... your name would definitely be the uh, the Chicken Nugget Killer. Oh, yeah, because, because I be... leave a little nugget behind on every single body. And exactly. Mix with the blood. I was using the blood as a dipping sauce. Yeah, you'd have, like, a chicken nugget. You'd have a bell. Because yeah, yeah. The bell's... The bell, the bell means dinner time for Bubby! Dinner time for Bubby! Oh, you know what? Actually, dinner time Bubby might actually be a better name. Oh, lock your goddamn doors, wife! Dinner time Bubby's on the loose! Yeehaw. Oh, yeah! Well, what do you think I would do, Joe? Like, I think I would do the cat and mouse game. Like, if I, you know, I would I would try and, pl like, here's how it would work, though. I would try and plan out some intense encounter with the police. You know, I'd go back and forth, back and forth, try to give them letters. But, like, I would do something fucking stupid. Like, I would send them a letter. Like, I would slap on, like, an address label that I got from, like, a catalog that just has my name. Just slap that on there. Or who who was it that, um, he was playing cat and mouse with the police. He's like, all right, here, let me, let me give yeah. you something out of floppy disk. Yeah, you guys yeah, can't yeah, trace yeah, this, right? It. You guys can't trace this. No, and then he got caught. Yeah, that was the Green River Killer, I believe. Let me. Yeah, the Green River Killer. Um, there's, like he said, there is an insane amount of these fucking people. Uh, if you want to know more, and check out last podcast on the left. You know, I'm willing to plug them here just because I think their their content is so good. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. They keep great. a lot. They, you know, it's comedy. It's primarily comedy, and it's secondary. Like. Very, very dark humor, uh, horror, supernatural, serial killer, psychology, stuff like that. It's uh, that's where that's where I got a lot of my information from because they go very deep into it. But um, those guys are cool. Uh, yeah. One day I would love to uh, get an alcoholic beverage with Henry Zabrowski. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, like I said, I would um, I would try and play a cat and mouse game and like fuck it up really, really hard. But like the police would overlook it because they assume I'm way smarter than I actually am. Like, they would assume there's no way that this Tad... Ba it, it can't be this guy. It can't be this this pudgy Dr. Eggman-looking podcast yeah, host. Yeah, yeah, this mild-mannered nerd. Yeah, mild-mannered Tad Becker. Yeah, yeah. But, no, I, I think you're just... You'll get, like, fed up one day at Cracker Barrel and probably just take a chainsaw and kill three people with it and you'll be a spree killer. That's right, because there's different types of killers. There's, yep. uh... 
There's Spree, which is just someone goes, uh, like Elliot Rogers and uh, what was the other kid's name? Uh, Eric Harris. Uh... Or yeah, Eric Harris and Dylan Cleval were the Virginia Tech. No, the no, they were Columbine. They were yeah. Columbine. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Again, uh, your goddamn school shooting's wrong, Tad. The fact that I can get them mixed up because there's so many is pretty fucked up. But those mm-hmm. two were uh, in this like. Ah oh, man, Columbine makes me mad. I wasn't around when it happened, but there was this uh this whole uh, story pushed by the media that they were like two nerds that got bullied and like struck back. When that is about as far from the case as possible. Oh yeah, absolutely. They were two sadistic fucking asshole piece of shit living human diapers. And like there was there was some stupid person trying to be some edgy kid. Who like made a uh, a Counter Strike Go map that was like his school, or it was like it was like a, the Columbine school. Well, I I mean the and like Eric the, Harris did a couple Doom maps, but it, they, he never did one of his school. Yeah, well, and I mean the, everyone's the media made report Doom maps. they did. Yeah, everyone's do, everyone's made Doom wads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, I I don't go on just uh, mutilate a ragdoll two dot com and come while I play it. Oh God, that, I forgot about that fucking game. Yeah. You could like we would all right, we'd go to my fucking grandma's on Christmas and Joe be like, hey, check this game out and it would just be like a rag doll that like you could put nails through and shit. <laughs> yeah. What what explain that and explain Happy Tree Friends to me, because I do not understand the appeal of those fucking things. Uh, well, I mean, um, Happy Tree Friends, it's just basically, like, you know how people like uh, Saw and Final Destination? Like, it's just fun watching people die in fictional things, so you just get to watch, like, cartoons die. Happy Tree Friends always seem to, like, push it to the point where it's like, okay, now this is Well, yeah, it's fun. very, very cartoonish violence, yeah. Like, their eyes will, like, pop out, and then uh, it'll be, like, one long strand, and maybe it'll choke another character. And, yeah. Are they even around? What the fuck happened to those people? Um, they ran out of money, um, and then they finally got enough money to do five more episodes, and I think they're selling them now. At, like, episodes, aren't they, like, three-minute shorts? Yeah. Yeah. They did have a TV series uh, for a year. It was on Spike. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they did decent for themselves. They, I'm sure they made a lot in merchandising and stuff. Anyway, uh, as I was saying before... um. Uh, there was, like, this YouTube video of this dude showing this off trying to be edgy, and, like, the description of it was, like, you know, two nerds bullied by society strike back. And I'm like, no, that actually really pisses me off. Yeah, it's like Hatred, the video game. Hatred was another stupid fucking thing. Yeah. That was a game that came out, for those who don't know, it was last summer? I want to say last summer. Yeah, you, um, yeah. It was a game that's entire purpose was to be as edgy as humanly possible, where you just play a dude running around shooting people down in the street. And um, it became, it got a lot of coverage because it was um, during that, I think it was during the fucking Gamergate shit. Yeah, it was. And uh, they put it up on Steam and then it got taken down and then it got put back up because Gabe Newell was like, even if I don't agree with the game, you should not, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a game. It doesn't matter what its message is as long as the game is playable and people vote it on the game, on the fucking store through Greenlight. Then yes, this game should be allowed on Steam. Yeah, but that's not true because he doesn't allow hentai on Steam. Well, that's not a game. That's just not safe for work. No, content. but you can do like yeah, the, the um, like uh, visual novels with, where you get to fuck the pussies or whatever. Well, I mean that that would be rated A by the ESRB and a, rated Hatred A. Hatred was rated A. Adults only. It got rated adults only. Is it like that? I'm pretty sure that yeah, they had I... a second version that came out that was rated M that was on Steam. No, I don't believe so. It was put on scene whenever it was still adults only. Then that must. Then that's a weird exception because I'm pretty sure that was the main rule for the thing. Was like, we the, will not have rated A games on Steam. That's the rule that they want to hide behind, but they will because they also allowed the uh, the uncut version of Indigo Prophecy. That's adults only. It's heavy. The game before Heavy Rain, David Cage. I've been wanting to play that. And I have. Yeah. But I haven't. Give. I haven't had the time to sit down to play it. Yeah, I mean, the thing of it is, um, they just will not allow sex games on Steam, because the only games that get adult-only are sex games, and then a couple edge cases where it was too violent, and then mm-hmm. the game never came out or it was changed, which were Punisher and Mad Hunt, um, Indigo Prophecy for sex, which was eventually allowed, and then this game, which was allowed for violence. What is Indigo Pro- I remember the What do I remember from Indigo Prophecy 
is that it's very close to Heavy Rain. Yeah, it is. And that it's like it's a primarily story based game, and I had problems playing it because the controls in the PC version were literally ass. Ah, okay. Like I, I tried I touching it, it and like I tried playing it, and the game just farted in my face. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, yeah, like Dwarf Fortress. I mean, people like try to play that for fifty hours, and then they still don't know how to move the dwarves. I mean, I played Team Fortress 2 for about 400 hours before I actually started improving at the game. Yeah, yeah. And I've got like, I've got 1,700 hours into that fucking thing. Okay. Right. So. I got 1,300 in Isaac. 1,300 in Isaac? Yep. Binding of Isaac. Uh, Rebirth or? Um, well, about 1,100 in Rebirth and then another 400 in Flash Isaac. Holy shit. Yes, yeah, so I guess it's a 15 now. How can you play, like, even with that, uh, okay, so what was with, um, so the the Binding of Isaac Rebirth is a fun game. Uh, there was an update that came out, I think it's the last one, that added mod support and a bunch of other stuff. Well, and Apparently, was... people were, like, super, super pissed off. Yeah, yeah, people were being whiny, and they kept crying. Um, so what happened was there's Afterbirth, which is an expansion that came out a year ago. Um, a month or so ago, uh, no, well, two months, uh, Afterbirth Plus came out, which is another expansion with mod support added. Um, people bitched and cried because they didn't like the final, final boss, and, like, it was a bit glitchy, which all of Endman's games are, it's just, like, he's not, he's not a programmer himself, so he doesn't really control that. Wait, what the hell does he do, then? He's a game designer and artist. Oh, what a fuck, man. Yeah. Yeah, Wish he I gets could... to be the face of everything. Who uh, who programmed the Flash Isaac then? Um, that was a guy named Florian Himsel. Um, he did a lot of Edmund's other Newgrounds games, like Time Fuck, uh, Coil, and Spewer. Um, so Edmund McMullen or whatever is like a fucking idea guy. Well, but he's done fifteen games at this point. They've all been really well received. I mean, he's Only the two main of them game have designer. Made him money. And those were Binding of Isaac and Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Super Meat Boy. Did he? Yeah, he did did Super Meat Boy. Okay, so three. Um, Yeah, uh, he did the Basement Collection, which is a compilation of all of his, like, Newgrounds games for, like, four bucks, but yeah. No, I mean, he was doing, like, indie games before it was a thing, so he's just kind of one of the big ones. I guess so. Yeah. Um... Because he was going to do a game called Mugenics, which I was extremely excited about, but that's dead. It was going to be a cat hoarding eugenics simulator, where you play as like a crazy old cat lady and you try to get as many cats into your house as you can. Before getting caught by... Uh... No, 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 nothing like that. Oh, I thought it was um, you had to try and hide it from uh, Animal protect- Animal Protective Services or whatever mm. while trying to get your cats into like the optimal... like thing or whatever. No, I don't believe so. I mean, there was a fighting mode with that was like Pokemon. There was like a beauty pageant mode. There was like an Animal Crossing shop type thing so you could buy more crap for your house. <laughs> yeah, and it was just kind of like a mix of like, um, maybe like Harvest Moon and Animal Crossing with like cra- crazy cat ladies and disease and dead cats. Ugh. And it was going to be amazing, but yeah, now it's canceled. What's he working on now? Is he still working on the, the Super Meat Boy Infinite Runner for phones? Uh, it's probably canceled at this point, too, because Mario came out. Ah, that's right. Mario Run. Yep, no, nope, they, uh, Nintendo ate his lunch. Well, good, it took you, what, you don't even have to do shit, Edmund. Yeah, but no, the other people are doing stuff. Almost it's not like, his uh, fault of stuff has taken time, I mean, because all he does is the art and design, so. Uh, I feel like, uh, because, like, this is the first time you've hear, I'm even hearing of this. Does, like, Edmund even mention all these people that are doing extra work of this fucking game? Yeah, of course he does. I mean, Team Me is him and Tommy Reffinus. Um Binding of Isaac always had Florian Hensel. And then um, Binding of Isaac Rebirth is uh, Nicholas, the guys who did the Cave Story Plus port and 1001 Spikes. Never played 1001 Spikes. I did play Cave Story. Really enjoyed yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cave Story is good. Uh Indie games are kind of a huge thing. Uh, wasn't the first, like, really big indie game Cave Story? Yes. Yeah. It definitely was. That was 2004. Wow. So, like, a almost a decade and a half ago. Yep. Yeah, it was uh, freeware. It got poured to a bunch of other platforms in time, and, yeah. Uh, it got on the Wii eventually and stuff like that. I think, yeah, it got on the WiiWare. Um, 
The first big indie game I remember on a console was Super Meat Boy, I believe. Yeah. Or Castle well, Crashers. Yeah, no, Super Meat Boy is 2010. Um, I think Castle Crashers was like 08, and Braid was like a big one. That was 08. Oh, that's right, that's right. Braid World was... of Goo. World of Goo, also known as like this game is literally in every single fucking indie bundle. Yeah. It was in like every Humble bundle for like a decade. Yeah, 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 but you gotta pay that dollar. Mm, yeah. Like it was kind of a fun game. Oh, I really like it. It's got an amazing theme, but um, I'm just not like a huge fan of like um, physics puzzle type games. Well, speaking of physics puzzles, um, Half-Life 2 was the one that really pioneered that stuff, wasn't it? Um, if the whole physics engine, yeah, and like modern stuff it was. Um, there were some old games that tried to really do physics in like weird ways, like Red Faction, you could like tunnel through the earth to just kind of find your way around maps and stuff, and, um, but yeah, no, Half-Life 2 definitely pushed it into the mainframe. Yeah, Half-Life 2 is definitely uh, not an indie game. I think we can Valve agree with that. Valve is almost indie. I mean, they're independent, but they're... Yeah. Definitely well, they're big. not yeah. an indie game studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They used to make games. Now they just make money. Mm-hmm. I believe today hits the mark, either today or next week, um, the longest amount of time between TF2 updates. Mm-hmm. And here's something. I brought this up in TF2, uh, the TF2 video, but like I'm still baffled at this. TF2 got several, 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 several really, really funny, really well done short movies. Yeah, yeah, I like those. Dota 2 got two. It got the trailer, and it got like a 15 second segment in that one movie. Uh, um, oh god, I think it was called Free to Play. Uh, oh, it, it okay. was like a yeah, documentary yeah, 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 about yeah, the Dota guys. Yeah, they made like a documentary about esports and like Dota, and it's like, well, that's it. You, you, what the what the fuck is your is your movie team been doing since then? Well, I mean, they've probably just been working on Half Life Three. I highly Half Life Three will eventually come out. I think it's gonna be um, what Super Mario Bros was to arcades, as to what it's gonna be what Half Life Three is to VR. It's gonna do something that, or they're gonna try and wait until they could do something. That will revolutionize how people can play VR. Because right now, if you, if anyone hey, everyone anyone listening has been lucky enough to try out VR, like you have to have like a fucking mask on. It's got a thick ass cable, and like you've got to have a dedicated room in your house, and you've got to have like a minimum like fucking yeah. You got to 18... put three thousand bucks into this or a really nice computer. The mask. Um, you want to get like the whole trackball thing for your hands. Well, you don't need that. Uh, well, you don't need it on by, I mean, but yeah. But, like, it's a it's a huge time. It's, like, minimum. Like, if you already have a good computer, minimum, like, $400. Oh, yeah. I mean, the good ones are 600 for Vives. Yeah, like, it, you got to have... It's, it's incredibly inefficient. Like, there's Star Trek VR, which you're never going to be able to afford because you have to have, like, fucking six to eight setups. Like, it's, it's only... Like, there's no actual games that have VR as a main feature yet. And that's because the technology is really shitty. <laughs> it's yeah. pretty shitty. Um, I think a couple of, like, uh, FPSs have, like, ported their games to VR and they kind of work, but... Like, Just, like, where you're in first person in the headset. And then you move around with a controller. Yeah, because, like, you can't... Uh, you get incred- intense motion sickness. Yeah. Like, if you're in a first person shooter, yeah. then Because th- TF2 has it. TF2 has a VR oh, mode. Oh, okay. And uh, it's it's pretty unplayable because uh, all they do all they do is just shift the field of view like up and put it back inside the character's skull. Mm. So uh, you know that's the thing. It's like if you have an unusual hat, yeah, you just yeah. can't see. Like looking at somebody's nostrils, bunch of spy hair in my goddamn vision. Eh. But um, yeah, that's you know indie games. I uh, mean, we got way off track. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they should make an indie game about Jeffrey Dahmer. Just fucking some young boy's skull fragments. There's got to be a um an indie game by someone as edgy as, like, the Hatred guys where he plays a serial killer. Um, There is a Super Columbine RPG that hit the news a while ago. Oh, my God. Yeah. How does it play? Um, 
Um, it's not as horrible as you're thinking. It's kind of just like, um, like Final Fantasy is like Columbine. And I think it's like the devil telling them to do it or whatever. I don't know. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Oh, like no. That... I mean, there's much worse games out there kind of like about that kind of stuff. Like there's like, um, oh, there's like uh, what, suicide bombing like video games like about like how they should kill the insurgents. Oh, I think I've seen something like that. Like I've seen um, it was a video on YouTube. Uh, it's probably on Live Leak now. It was called Afghani Sniper, hmm. and it was like it had like an ISIS flag in the corner, I believe. And it was like video, like it was like a fucking Call of Duty quick scope montage of Afghani troopers sniping American like you know, ah, American okay. soldiers, and it was like, hey, your your brother knows Photoshop, right? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here, uh. You know, take this footage and uh, make it real fucking cool, and then it's, it's, it's so fucking surreal because it's like a fucking Call of Duty quick scope montage, but you're seeing American soldiers getting killed. It's all fucked up. Yeah, well, I mean, we've done the same thing, so. Yeah, I know, but I'm American. Nah. It's like I watched a scene from Ghost in the Shell, not the movie, because oh the movie. yeah, yeah, the one where everybody's all pissed off. Well, oh, I just want to see her nude. You gotta watch Under the Skin, folks. Under the Skin. 2014, I believe. Nude Scarlet. Ooh. For mm. data. Um, but I watched a scene from Ghost in the Shell, and it was like, uh, this lady was like a sniper on like a battlefield, and then like I saw an American trooper get shot, and I'm like, huh. I've never seen that in a movie. Yeah. Or like a, a car, like a show. I've never seen like an American soldier get killed. And I'm like, well, hold on a second. Yeah, why haven't I? Yeah. I realize it's because no one in America is going to fucking make that. No one's going to show that. They did Spec Ops The Line. Spec Ops The Line was a really good game. Yeah, I love it. I fucking loved it. Uh, I had to cha- The game changed the difficulty on me about, uh, right near the end of the game because I, c- I literally could not get past a helicopter because it would two-shot me, and it was completely mm-hmm. random if it would kill me or not. And the game just, like, uh, without me knowing, changed the difficulty. And so I didn't get my fucking Chivo. Oh, the goddamn achievements. Give them to me. Oh, I need to find every single box of Cheerios in Spec Ops the Line. Because if you find all 92 boxes of Cheerios, you get the secret Honeycrisp ending where Walker's eating cereal with a honey spoon. And he, he looks into the bowl and he sees a flag washing over the milk. You were sick. You must say. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, Joe, I think that we'll, it's about time to wrap up our Serial Killers and Indie Games episode. Oh, okay, yeah. We're going to have to wrap this up like Albert Fish would wrap himself up in carpet. What, do you wrap himself in carpet? I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One time his daughter just found him rolled up in a carpet. Oh, God, that's right. He had a daughter? Oh, he had tons of children. Oh, my God. No, he, he never fucked them, though. Uh, I know that his favorite movie was... Uh... Jake and the Magic Dragon, right? Fish? He was 1900s. It was, um... No, no, no. His favorite movie was, uh... It was a Walt Disney movie. It was, like, Jake and the Dragon or something. And it was, um... It recently had a remake. Like, a live-action reboot. Where it was, uh... It's Pete's... Pete's Dragon. Uh, Pete's Dragon? Wasn't that, like, the 60s? Pete and the Magic Dragon. Yeah, I, I know sure. what you're talking about. Wasn't that made in the 60s? Um, I believe so. I believe that was... Cause there I remember was no this. way Albert Fish was alive in the 60s, I don't think. Let me see. Uh, uh, yeah, no, he died in 1936. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'll look up the movie, but yeah, he was he was like an old-timey guy. Well, uh, while he's doing that, we'll go ahead and close out this podcast. Uh, this one's more of like an impromptu, just kind of like a... Kind of like a noise boys with me and Joe here. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do some plugs here while uh, he's doing that. Um, yeah, that, that was 77. Oh, wow. Yeah, I guess yeah. I guess not then. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, you know, uh, you can find the podcast uh, here on YouTube. You can find it on iTunes, Google Play. Yeah, uh, Stitcher, Bandcamp. The... Well, it's not on Bandcamp. Yeah, yeah. You got to go to Bandcamp and support us. It's not on Stitcher either. Oh, uh, yeah. We are on Twitter, though. It's at Let Me Tell You PD. Um, there's an email, which is Let Me Tell You About T at gmail.com. That's Let Me Tell You About with three T's. 
Um, there's a Discord where luckily Joey is never around because no, he doesn't no, have the no. link. Uh, but you can find I me got banned. I I will ban you if you show up if you show your fucking mug in that Discord. Uh, that's where you can find me and uh, all the other people like doing revival. Me and Alex, all that, all that, uh, all those shenanigans. Uh, we have a Patreon we set up that uh, is uh, 100% towards audio stuff. So that hopefully how this turns out, the audio quality is really really nice because I'm using actual equipment at a friend's house. I mentioned his name earlier. You probably didn't like that, as Joe said. Eh, well, yeah, whatever. Joe, uh, go ahead. Do you have any plugs? Yes. Um, so I am in a independent horror comedy called Butcher the Bakers. It's about these uh, two bakers who have to kill a grim reaper who's gone rogue and started killing people all around town. It's kind of like um, Evil Dead 2 meets like Bill and Ted. <laughs> Bill and Evil Ted 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, I'm a main actor in the movie, and it's going to be coming out in about a month from now, probably. Yeah, about the end of uh, April. Uh, when it comes out, it'll also be up on Vimeo and all that. So. Yeah, it should be up on Vimeo, maybe. Uh, we're going to get a local run around here in Illinois, um, a, kind of a couple theaters around here. But uh, after that's all done, it's going to go up on Vimeo and stuff, probably. Um, we might be moving away from Vimeo. We could probably find better stuff. Probably put it on YouTube or Amazon and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm actually in the movie as well. Yep, Tad is a featured actor in the film. I am. I have a I have a line and everything. I don't yeah, know if yeah. you'll actually hear it. It might just be during a montage, but uh, you guys could see me get uh, murdered. I had to do the scene twice because the first one they recorded on the wrong cameras. Yep, 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 we did. And uh, if you'd like to listen to tales about that, you can go to uh, hometownhero.com. Uh, 99 Set Movies is the podcast I'm normally on, and let me tell you, I'm even naughtier on there. They give him his own like hour-long segment, but uh, yeah, 99 Cent Movies is the podcast that Joe's on. Yeah, it's on uh, hometownherofilm.com, and then you can check out our Facebook on uh, Hometown Hero Film uh, Capped. All right, well, uh, we'll see you guys another time. Cool, thank you guys. Have a good one.